Welcome to Little Faith Big Blessings. I am Aniqua where I talk about all things faith-based, motherhood, and living like Christ. So I wanted to talk about something that I've been having a conversation about for a little while now. Um, I am also currently rereading the book of Acts, which has quickly become one of my favorite books of the Bible. Um, really how Saul becomes Paul because his story is so transformational that it's just like, it's it's crazy. So I was having a conversation with a group of people and we were talking about how our life is not our own. The plan that God has for us is not for us, but it's for other people. So when you're not following God's direction, when you're not following his instructions, when you're not listening to him and you're just in the world, living in the world and doing what you want to do, you are preventing other people from getting their blessings. And why that makes me think of Paul is because if y'all know who Paul was before he was Paul, you would see how him being who he was, where he came from, like you wouldn't believe it. So Saul was completely against Christ. He was completely against the way, right? And so it came at the end of chapter seven in Acts where Stephen had given his sermon and the people were like so upset because of what he said at the end of his sermon. And I'm gonna read it to you. I'm reading from the Christian Standard Bible. And it says, you stiff-necked people with uncircumcised hearts and ears, you are always resisting the Holy Spirit. As your ancestors did, you do also. Which of the prophets did your ancestors not persecute? They even killed those who foretold the coming of the righteous one, whose betrayers and murderers you have now become. You received the law under the direction of angels and yet have not kept it. And that's what I was saying about you receive the instructions and things that you're supposed to do in your life, yet you don't do it. Not only is that dishonoring God, but you're also affecting other people from the plan that God has for them. You're a part of other people's plans, just like other people's plans are a part of your plan. So then it goes on to say, when they heard these things, they, have, they were enraged and gnashed their teeth at him. Stephen, full of the Holy Spirit, gazed into heaven. He saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the righteous hand of God. He said, look, I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. They yelled at the top of their voices, covered their ears, and together rushed against him. They dragged him out of the city and began to stone him. And the, witness, the witnesses laid their garments at the feet of a young man named Saul. That's where Saul is introduced in the book of Acts, chapter 7, verse 59. While they were stoning Stephen, he called out, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. He knelt down and cried out with a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. And after saying this, he died. First, verse 1 of chapter 8, Saul agreed with putting him to death. So he agreed with Stephen being murdered because Stephen had gave this powerful sermon. And granted, even in his sermon, he didn't have like all of the details from what happened from the time of Moses up until um, after Jesus was murdered. There weren't a whole lot of details, but he gave the most important details reminding them of what they did. Like y'all are living like this, even though the law has been given to you and it has been lived out, Jesus coming and dying on the cross and being resurrected, y'all still don't believe it? And so it makes me wonder, how can they even believe the scriptures? How can they even believe the law if Jesus came and you killed him? But let me go on. It says, on that day, a severe prosecution, a severe persecution broke out against the church in Jerusalem. And all except the apostles were scattered throughout the land of Judea and Samaria. Devout men buried Stephen and mourned deeply over him. Saul, however, was ravaging the church. He would enter a house after house, drag off men and women and put them in prison. And so he is like, you know what? I don't believe Stephen. I don't want other people believing that, you know, Jesus died and rose from the dead. And that was really their whole thing is the resurrection. 
coming back to life. They were like, that's necromancy. Like, that's blasphemous. That's, no. Like, that just, that can't be. But it's in the scripture that y'all so wholeheartedly like to quote and that you claim that you live by, but do you really? So then we don't see any more of Paul until chapter 9. Now Saul was still breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord. He went to the high priest and requested letters from him to the synagogues in Damascus, so that if he found any men or women who belonged to the way, he might bring them as prisoners to Jerusalem. As he traveled and was nearing Damascus, a light from heaven suddenly flashed around him, falling to the ground. Okay, falling to the ground. So my thing is, did he fall to the ground because his light was so bright? Or did he fall to the ground out of a sign of respect? He heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Who are you, Lord? Saul said. I am Jesus, the one you are persecuting, he replied. But get up and go into the city, and you will be told what you must do. The men who were traveling with him stood speechless, hearing the sound, but seeing no one. Saul got up from the ground, and though his eyes were open, he could see nothing. Now, I just want to stop right there for a second, because I feel like that is so powerful. His eyes were open, but he could see nothing. Isn't that like us sometimes? Like God will have a plan for us and it'll be right there. What he wants us to do will be right there in our face. And our eyes are open, but we're looking everywhere else but there. Or we see everything else but what God has right in front of us. And it's like, why do we do that? Like we see it, but we don't see it. Or we just refuse to. And also... It's interesting because Jesus made him blind. The light made him blind for three days. Okay, it says that, so they took him by the hand, the men who were with him, and led him to Damascus. He was unable to see for three days and did not eat or drink. So he was not able to see. He was blinded. But the men who were with him were not blinded. Because they're the ones who took him to Damascus. So my thing is that was intentional. Jesus made him blind. He was like, you know what? You're not going to see anything. You know, you want to sit here and persecute me and not believe what's happening. You're taking all these people, going into their houses, putting them in prison because they're following me. And that brings me back to my point. He is preventing other people from living in their purpose. He is preventing other people from living out God's plan. And Jesus put a full stop to it. He was like, no. Stop. You're not going to persecute me. You're not. You're going to be blinded for three days. And I and we'll get to like what happens after that. But I just want to like think about how when we're living in the world, and I'm speaking about myself too, because you know, I'm not far removed from living in the world. All this time I've been living in the world, not living out God's plan, you know, doing what I wanted to do. Just everything that's against what God wants me to do. How many people was I stopping from getting their blessing? How many people was I, stop, was I stopping from living in the plan that God had for them? Because I wouldn't do it. Just like Saul is not doing it. He's against it completely. And he wants everyone else to be against it just like he is. And it makes you think about when you start living like Christ... And the people who used to know you will talk about how you used to be. And I'm getting ahead of myself. I am getting ahead of myself. But I just, it's, it brings back to my point, like, how many people are we stopping from living out God's plan? Because we're doing what we want to do. And we're just against everything that he wants us to do. So let's keep reading. There was a disciple in Damascus named Ananias, and the Lord said to him in a vision, Ananias, here I am, Lord, he replied. Get up and go to the street called Straight, the Lord said to him, to the house of Judas and ask for a man from Tarsus named Saul, since he is praying there. In a vision, he has seen a man 
named Ananias coming in and placing his hands on him so that he may regain his sight. Lord, Ananias answered, listen, this is what I was talking about when people knew you from before. I have heard from many people about this man, how much harm he has done to your saints in Jerusalem. And he has authority here from the chief priest to arrest all who call on your name. And I wrote a note there, Ananias can't be blamed for being afraid, but also these are instructions from Jesus. And without that, I wouldn't have, and these are instructions from Jesus. Y'all, it's hot. I'm kind of shy. Let me turn <laughs> the AC on because it's hot. It's hot, y'all. I'm in Texas. Okay. And listen to what Jesus says. But the Lord said to him, go, for this man is my chosen instrument to take my name to Gentiles, kings, and Israelites. I will show him how much he must suffer for my name. So Jesus just completely went over Ananias saying, but he probably gonna put me in jail. Go, go, do what I said. Ananias went and entered the house. He placed his hands on him and said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus who appeared to you on the road you are traveling has sent me so that you may regain your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. At once, something like scales fell from his eyes and he regained his sight. Then he got up and was baptized. And after taking some food, he regained his strength. So the whole eating and drinking, I think that that was also like he was forced into a fast. I don't think he did that on his own. He was forced into doing it. But also, how many people are like Ananias? You know, they know how someone used to be and they're afraid of how they used to be but jesus was like do it anyway just do it just trust me just trust me and i think it's when jesus said i will show him how much he must suffer for my name i'd have been like bet bet i yeah sure will after all that he has done he was a murderer and he was willing to incarcerate people just for following the way Saul was with the disciples in Damascus for some time. Immediately, he began proclaiming Jesus in the synagogues. He is the son of God. All who heard him were astounded and said, isn't this the man in Jerusalem who was causing havoc for those who called on, his, on this name and came here for the purpose of taking them as prisoners to the chief priests? Isn't that what happens? When you give your life over to Christ, isn't that how people, it's crazy how people will come and say to you, oh, well, you used to do this. You used to do that. Okay, but I'm not doing that anymore. Because what I was doing before could have been stopping y'all from reaching y'all's blessings. Y'all are still doing the same thing. So let me lead by example of how you should be living your life. Praise God, that just came to me. Literally just came to me. But it's like, how can you lead the people around you to a better life if you're not doing it yourself but Saul grew stronger and kept confounding the Jews who lived in Damascus by proving that Jesus is the Messiah after many days had passed the Jews conspired to kill him but Saul learned of their plot so they were watching the gates day and night intending to kill him but his disciples took him by night and lowered him in a large basket through an opening in the wall. Isn't that the same thing that happened to Jesus? They wanted to kill him. They did because of everything that he was preaching and teaching. But they were thinking that he was blaspheming, first of all, the scriptures. And some of them also thought that the devil was in him, that he was possessed by Satan, which that didn't make any sense to begin with. But it's like, like Jesus said, I will show him how much he must suffer for my name because of how much Jesus had to go through. I'm going to put you through the same thing. The same thing that I went through and you want to sit here and persecute me, I'm going to put you through the same thing. And the thing is, over time, we see after Saul becomes Paul, how many people he brings to Christ. Jesus changed him and he suffered. I mean, 
he suffered. Paul suffered. But you know what? He was changed so that he could bring more people to Christ. The same way that he was persecuting Christ is essentially the same way he's going to be bringing people to Christ. Because if y'all have read Paul's letters, I mean, the conviction. When he arrived in Jerusalem, he tried to join the disciples, but they were all afraid of him. Since they did not believe he was a disciple, Barnabas, however, took him and brought him to the apostles and explained to them how Saul had seen the Lord on the road and the Lord had talked to him and how in Damascus he had spoken boldly in the name of Jesus. Spoken boldly. Just how he was speaking boldly against the name of Jesus, he was speaking boldly in the name of Jesus. And it's like... Y'all, and it keeps coming back to my point. How he was before Jesus put a full stop to his whole plan. How he was doing these things so boldly against Jesus. Now he's doing these things so boldly in Jesus. So living out of your purpose, but now living in your purpose. To change the minds of those around you. And he even got some help from Barnabas, who was Joseph. But that's a whole nother story. But that's what I'm saying. Like, y'all, just think about how you're living your life. Are you following God's plan? Are you living in Christ like you say you are? And by the way that you're living your life, do other people see how you're living your life? Is your life, the way you live it, the way you want other people to come into Christ? Are you leading by example? Are you a good representation of Christ? Are you living in your purpose? Are you living out God's plan? And using your testimony to also bring people into their purpose and live out God's plan. So the cycle can repeat. Let's, let's just continue. Saul was coming and going with them in Jerusalem, speaking boldly in the name of the Lord. He conversed and debated with the Hellenistic Jews, but they tried to kill him. When the brothers found out, they took him down to Caesarea and sent him off to Tarsus. Y'all. And then we don't hear about him for a while until he becomes Paul. But my whole point is, does your life reflect what God has planned for you so that you can also lead other people to what God has planned for them and I've been so quiet about so many things that have changed in my life that's why I really haven't been on here like doing sit down videos because I've been going through so much change and so much conviction but I really felt led to give this message because it's just like I've been hearing this over the past couple of weeks time and time again, that your life is not your life. God's plan for you is not for you. It is for other people. Just like Saul, he just showed up on the scene as a murderer and all of a sudden, he's living for Christ. So yeah, I hope that this helped someone. I hope this message resonated with someone. Y'all, please like, comment, share, and subscribe if this is the kind of content that you feel as though you need in your life. And share it with somebody. Share it. Maybe somebody else needs to hear the message too. <laughs>